Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your Wacom Mobile Studio Pro for digital painting. The Mobile Studio Pro that I'm using is fresh out of the box, and this is the first time I've used it, so I haven't done any customization to it. When you start up the Mobile Studio Pro for the first time, it's going to ask you to calibrate the pen input. So I'm gonna click on Calibrate, and then click on Calibrate in the Wacom Tablet Properties. What I want to do is I want to put the tip of the pen right in the center of this target here, and I want to keep my pen upright or vertical. I don't want to have it tilted at an angle. I also want to be sitting in front of the screen as I would normally when I'm drawing. So once I've gone ahead and clicked on these targets, my pen should be calibrated. And just look very carefully to make sure that it is. If your pen cursor aligns with the tip of your pen, then you're on the right track. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit the Windows Home key, and I'm going to go to the Start menu and just unpen some stuff, because there's a lot of stuff there that I don't want. You can tap and hold on the icon to remove it or unpin it, or you can right click on it as well to get that same option. Now that's not going to uninstall those programs. In order to do that, you need to go to the little menu over on the left, and you'll need to go through and on each of those applications that you don't want, you can right click and you can choose uninstall. And I'm gonna do that for a lot of this bloatware. This is just games and all kinds of crap that I just don't want on my tablet. It takes up space and some of it might run in the background and eat up some of the memory and the CPU. So just remove anything that you don't want. Now for the apps that I will use, I'm gonna drag those over onto my little shortcut area here so that I have these easily accessible buttons that I can click when I hit the start menu and I can bring up whatever it is that I want to use. There's a few things in here like the calculator and I pre-installed XSplit. It comes bundled with Artex Studio. I'm gonna try that out. Might also use the camera and a couple of other things. And you can feel free just to drag those around to rearrange them wherever you want. If you want to make the icons smaller, you can also right click on them too. And there's an option to resize them. Next, I'm going to go to the File Explorer and I'm going to drag out my C drive as a shortcut that I could click on on my desktop. And maybe I'm old fashioned, but I like having those desktop icons even though I'm working on a tablet. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the Windows 10 Upgrade Assistant, which is already available on my desktop here. This is going to make sure that Windows 10 is updated to the newest version of Windows 10. So I recommend that you do this to make sure that everything's working properly. It's going to check for updates and then it's going to download the latest version of Windows and then install it. So make sure that your tablet's plugged in and you want to be able to give it some time to be able to do this. I know you just got this tablet and you really want to draw on it and do things with it, but it's better to do these major updates first so that things like software and all of the other things that you use on your computer are functioning optimally. Once Windows has been updated, you'll need to restart your computer, and then we can continue setting things up. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little speaker icon that's down in the taskbar, and I'm gonna open up sounds, and I'm gonna turn the sounds off, so I'm gonna set it to the no sounds profile. Next, I'm gonna click on the battery icon in the taskbar, and that'll bring up the power options. And under power options, we want to change our power plan because right now it's trying to save power. It's not going to use all the juice that the Mobile Studio Pro can use. And we want it to use all of its juice. So in order to do that, we want to click on show additional plans down here at the bottom. And then let's choose high performance. Why it's not set to that by default, I don't know. And I'm going to click on change plan settings. Now you can set these options however you like. I don't like my display to automatically turn off, so I'm just going to go ahead and disable that. I also don't like my computer to go to sleep unless I put it to sleep, so I'll change that as well. I'm going to go to change advanced power settings, and we'll scroll on down to display, and we want to make sure that display brightness is turned up to 100%. But most importantly, we want to look at adaptive brightness, and we want to go ahead and turn that off because that's going to automatically dim your screen depending on how bright it is in the environment surrounding you, and I find that that's kind of annoying, so I like to leave that off. Next, before you do too much, it's important to have an antivirus installed. You can search for Windows Defender in the Start menu, and then just make sure that if you're gonna use Windows Defender as your antivirus, that you go ahead and update it first and let it scan your computer. Now, if you haven't added anything to your computer, technically you don't need to scan it. It just, it wants you to, so you should, but you can skip this step if you don't wanna wait for it to scan, because it will take some time. Now let's configure some of the Wacom tablet properties. I'm gonna go to my Start menu, and I'm going to scroll down and look under Wacom Tablet, and I'm going to drag the desktop center and the Wacom Tablet properties into my shortcuts here so I can get to those very easily. Let's start by going to the Wacom Desktop Center. Let's check for updates, and if there's any updates, make sure to update your device. That'll help it work better, and it might add some functionality to the Wacom Tablet properties. 
Once your device is finished updating, go ahead and restart, and then we can launch the Wacom Tablet properties. In the pen tab, I'm going to configure the buttons on my pen. I'm going to go ahead and start with the button that's farthest away from the tip, and I'm going to set that to right click. And for the button that's closest to the tip, I'm going to set that to a modifier of Control and Alt. That'll let me resize my brush in Corel Painter by clicking and dragging my pen. But you can set these up however you like. In the Wacom Tablet Properties, you can also set the tip feel, but we'll come back to that later. You can test your current pressure by pressing down to make that slider move. You can check your eraser settings, and you can recalibrate your pen if you need to. You can also enable and disable Windows Ink here. Let's go ahead and look at the options. There's options to change the slide switch mode and the pressure compatibility. Probably won't really need to change those. You can also set up the express keys, which we'll do a little bit later. And you can change the settings for the touch input as well. There's also a tab where you can see the different gestures that you can use to control your tablet. So that's all we're going to do to the properties for now. Let's go ahead and go back to our desktop now. Let's go to the control panel in our start menu. Let's go ahead and drag that out as a shortcut because that's really handy to have access to. And within that control panel, we can change it to list view. And then we want to look under mouse. And personally, I like to change my pointer to the Windows Black Extra Large Scheme. I like that pointer better. It's bigger and easier to see on a high resolution screen. But you don't have to change this if you don't want to. Now we're still not able to see the cursor. We'll have to change that setting later. Let's go ahead and change some more settings. I'm going to go to the Start menu, click on the gear icon, and that'll bring up the Windows Settings panel. This is very similar to the Control panel, but it might have some additional settings. Let's try Personalization first. That'll let us change some colors and a few other things. I'm going to change the background to solid color because that's what I prefer, but you could add a picture if you want to. And I'll go to the Colors tab on the left, and we can pick an accent color. I like to use just black and gray because then it's neutral and it doesn't alter my perception of color. And then down near the bottom of the window, you also have the option of choosing a light or a dark theme, and personally, I kind of like the dark theme. That's just easier on my eyes. Now, there's some debate about whether or not white pixels or black pixels use more energy. I think the battery savings are probably not going to be all that great regardless of what you choose, so just choose kind of based on what you like the best. Next, I'll choose lock screen from the menu on the left. The lock screen is what comes up when your computer is locked. I'm going to change the background to picture, and I might just replace that later. And there are some options if you want to show apps on that screen and other things, but we'll go ahead and just skip over that for now. Also options over on the left for the start menu. You can turn off suggestions and start so those things don't pop up and annoy you. And you can feel free to configure that however you want. Let's also take a look at taskbar. And you can show and hide the taskbar automatically if you like. There's lots of options for that. I'll click the home button to go back to the main Windows setting page. And let's try system now. I'm on display right now, and that will let me choose the size of text apps and other items. So if all the palettes and text on your screen are too big, you can lower it to something like 100%. Then you can see more on your screen at once. Or you can increase the size if it's too hard to see, and you can make it very big and very large. However, more of the palettes and things like that are going to take up your screen. So you might want to try to find something that works best for the kind of art that you're making so that you can still see as much of the artwork as possible while still being able to read the text and see the palettes. And this is a global setting, so it affects all of your applications on your computer. There's also an option to lock the rotation. That way your display doesn't rotate when you rotate your canvas. But I think that's all I want to set up in here for now. You can feel free to dig around and change some other settings if you like. So I'm going to go back to the settings home screen. And now I'm going to go to accounts and then sign in options. First, I'm going to change whether or not I have to log in again when my computer wakes up from sleep. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then the Windows key can recognize your fingerprint, so we'll click on Fingerprint Setup. That'll take us to the Windows Hello Setup. And all we need to do is touch the fingerprint sensor about 200 times, and then it'll finally recognize our fingerprint, and we can use that to log in instead of a password. After that, it'll ask you to create a PIN. That way, if your fingerprint isn't working, you can use the PIN to log in. Now I know I'm jumping around a bit, but let's go back to the regular control panel. And let's take a look at pen options under pen and touch. For example, if we look under the touch tab, there's an option to enable or disable visual feedback when touching the screen. So if you don't like that little ripple effect that happens when you touch the screen, or the lines that appear when you swipe the screen, you can disable that to turn those off. Let's go back to the control panel and we'll take a look at tablet PC settings. There might also be some settings here that will help you set up your tablet. For example, if we go to the other tab, we can change the handedness from right to left. That way, left-handed people can draw on the tablet too. 
You can also click on the settings in the start menu. And if you go to pen and windows ink, there's also some options to control your pen and tablet options. For example, here's where you can show the mouse cursor if you want. You can ignore touch input when using your pen and you can disable the handwriting panel when not in tablet mode and there's no keyboard attached. That's that really annoying keyboard panel that'll pop up constantly when you click on a text box. There's also an option to turn the visual effects on and off when you use your pen and touch. And you might also want to turn off show recommended app suggestions in the Windows Ink workspace. Next, let's go to Bluetooth over on the left, and this will give us a chance to pair our Bluetooth keyboard. We'll flip the keyboard over, make sure it's turned on, and we'll hold down the little pair button. And then when Windows says it's ready to pair, we'll click on the pair button, and we'll just enter the passcode that it gives you into your keyboard. Hit enter, and then the keyboard will be paired. And then next, let's go back to our desktop. We'll right click on the desktop and we'll choose NVIDIA Control Panel. Within the NVIDIA Control Panel, we'll go to Manage 3D Settings on the left, and then under the Global Settings tab, under Preferred Graphics Processor, we want to change it from Integrated Graphics to High Performance NVIDIA Processor. That will choose the Quadro processor that's in the Mobile Studio 16 if you have the upgraded version, and that GPU is much faster than the Integrated Graphics. Next, you'll want to go to the Program Settings tab, Select the program that you want to use, which will be Photoshop and any other graphics heavy applications like Corel Painter and Premiere Pro, and just make sure that it's set to the high performance NVIDIA processor rather than integrated graphics for each of the applications that you plan to use. This will ensure that these applications are using the Quadro rather than the built in slower integrated graphics. Let's click on apply to apply those changes. Now you can also go to set physics configuration and you can set the preferred GPU there as well. I don't know if it'll really help with art applications, but it might help with video games and 3D modeling applications. Now after linking my Quadro GPU to Photoshop, I definitely noticed an increase in the speed when I used big brushes. So this definitely works. However, if your application does not utilize the GPU, you might not see any benefit at all. Now I'm ready to start installing some software on my tablet. I have software on my desktop computer and I'm going to transfer it to my Mobile Studio Pro using a flash drive that is compatible with both USB-C and USB 3.0. Now I won't go over everything I'm going to install, I'll just go over a few important things such as the Adobe RGB color profile. That's very good for expanding the range of colors available to you in your art applications. I'm also going to install Firefox as my web browser. I'll also install Corel Painter 2018, which is my digital art application of choice, and that'll give me something to work with when I set up my pen pressure and some of the other tablet functions. I'm gonna go ahead and create shortcuts in the start menu for some of these apps, and then I'll also install Adobe Creative Cloud so that I have access to Photoshop so I can test the tablet with that as well. You can feel free to install whatever you want. Once my software is installed, I'm gonna go ahead and start testing my pen so that I can set up the pen pressure and touch. I'm going to go ahead and load Corel Painter, and I'll just test my pen using a basic brush called Smooth Scratch Board. Looks like the pen pressure is working just fine. Make my brush a little bit bigger, and I'll test the range of pressure to see if I can get a thin to thick line, and I can. Now this pen has something like 8,000 levels of pen pressure, and so you may want to calibrate that to your specific touch if you press down firmer or lighter. You can do that in the Wacom Tablet Properties under Tip Feel. And if you press down, you can move that little meter. That'll show you how hard you're pressing. And if you need to make it firmer or softer, you can do that. Now with previous generation pens, I found I was setting it a notch towards firm, but with this particular pen, I'm finding that the default middle setting is working the best for me. So feel free to experiment until you find a setting you like. You may also be able to customize your pen pressure in the art application that you're using as a second level of calibration. For example, I can do that here in Corel Painter by drawing the amount of pressure that I want. Now I do notice that if you press down really hard on the screen, it kind of distorts the picture a little bit right in that area where you're pressing. And I found that that's because you're pressing too hard with the pen. If you're pressing down hard enough to distort the screen, then that's too hard. So you need to calibrate your pen so that you don't have to press down as hard to get the full range of pressure. That'll stop that distortion from happening when you draw with your pen. Now we're ready to test the touch feature, so make sure touch is turned on. We can pinch to zoom in and zoom out. We can twist to rotate the canvas. And with two fingers, we can move the page around as if it's a real piece of paper. Now in the preferences for your art application, you may be able to switch between Windows and the native touch mode for your art application. And that may give you better or worse results depending on what you pick. For example, I'll select Windows multi-touch and you can see that it's a little bit more rigid, but maybe a little bit more fluid and responsive than the Corel Painter touch. 
Here I am testing the pen pressure and the touch in Photoshop CC as well, and it's working very nicely. So now that the pen and touch are working, let's go ahead and set up our Express Keys. We'll go to the Wacom Tablet Properties, click on Functions, and then under the Express Keys tab, we can set up some of these Express Keys to perform in common shortcuts and commands. Now I'm going to set this up the way that I like, but you can feel free to set yours up however you like. I'm going to start with the top column of four buttons. For the first button, I'll choose Keyboard Modifier Shift. This is useful for drawing straight lines in your art application. The next button, I'll choose Keyboard Modifier Alt. That's useful for invoking the Color Dropper tool, which lets you sample colors. The next button will be Keyboard Modifier Control. That's also a modifier that I can use in my art applications. And then the fourth button will be Keyboard Keystroke Spacebar, which will allow me to pan the view of my canvas. Moving on down to the bottom column, I'm going to do Keyboard Keystroke. Control Alt 1, that'll bring up my Temporal Color Picker in Corel Painter. The next button will be Keyboard, Keystroke, Control 0, and in Corel Painter that'll automatically size the canvas to take up as much of the screen as possible. The key below that will be set to Keyboard, Keystroke, and then Tab, and that shows and hides the user interface or the palettes that are on screen so that you can see more of your canvas. And then the very last button will be set to Turn Touch On and Off. Now let's go to the touch ring tab and that has four buttons that we can program. And when we touch the touch ring going clockwise or counterclockwise, we can get two different commands. So let's set the left button to keystroke. And then when we go counterclockwise, that'll be control Z and clockwise will be control Y and that's undo and redo. So that's the way I like to set up my express keys. So I'm gonna go ahead and test them in Corel Painter, which is my art application of choice. So first I'll start by turning touch off. That seems to work fine. And I'll try holding pan, which is the bottom button in the top column. That lets me drag my page around. Next, let's try the top button, and that is shift. And if I hold shift, then I can draw straight lines. Beneath that is alt, and if I hold that, I can sample whatever color I click on on screen, so I can easily switch between white and black and other colors. Beneath that is control, and if I combine that with alt, then I can resize my brush, but control is also useful for a lot of other things. Now let's move down to the touch ring. I'll make sure that I click on the left button, and then if I run my finger along the ring counterclockwise, I undo. If I go clockwise, I can redo, and it's kind of like a fast forward rewind feature. Moving on to the second column of four buttons, the top button is set to my temporal color picker, so when I hit that, a little color picker pops up underneath my pen and I can quickly pick my color. That way I don't always have to have the palette open. Beneath that is zoom to fit, so if my canvas is too small or too big, I can click that and it'll automatically size it to fit right on the screen, taking up as much space as possible. Beneath that, I can hit tab and show and hide my user interface or my palettes. Now, by the way, if this little menu that pops up over here on the left is bothering you, you can go back to your Wacom tablet properties and you can turn off show touch ring setting and then it won't show that when you hit an express key. And then the very bottom button turns touch on and off as we already know. So that's set up the way I like it for Corel Painter, but you can also set your express keys per application, meaning that you can have a profile for all the other different applications you use. So I can add Corel Painter by clicking the plus button, and I can add Photoshop and all of the other applications I use. And each of those applications can use different express key settings per application. And the last tip I have deals with performance. There were occasionally times when I would draw or do something like pan my page or zoom in and out using the touch, and the Mobile Studio Pro would be very, very slow. And I actually figured out the reason why it isn't necessarily all due to these performance settings, but it's also due to what's using your CPU and memory. If anything is using a decent amount of your CPU and memory while you're trying to run your art application like Photoshop or Corel Painter, then it's going to slow down Photoshop and Corel Painter. So you want to make sure that you go into your task manager and you look to see if anything is running in the background. You'll be able to sort it by CPU usage and memory usage. And if it is, just disable it or stop that application and don't use it while you're trying to paint. That should make a big difference in how your device performs. So there you go. That's how I optimize my Mobile Studio Pro 16 for digital painting. I have a proper hands-on review coming up very soon where I'll test out all of the features and pros and cons of the device and give you much more detail and you'll actually get to see me draw on it in future videos as well. If you found this information helpful take a quick second to like this video and if you're new to my channel I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art tutorials and videos like this. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.